Good day and welcome to another start of A Week at the Plot, a Monday segment. Everything's very dry, as you can still see. I did some tidying up over there over the uh, yesterday, so took out an awful lot of the nettles and bindweed that was around there and that went into the brown perennial weed compost bin and onto our dead hedge as well. So yes, I'm going to be doing my regime of watering and feeding. But before I do that, I'm going to get into this bed to do weeding. A bit late, but um, but yeah. I'm also noticing some of the black crim, the, the branches that I left on. Can you see here? Here. They actually do need weighting or tying up because the, the fruit is weighting them down. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick those green fruits and make green tomato curry with them. Oh, more noise with a plane coming over. Hey ho. As I was saying, I am noticing that some of the fruits are beginning to ripen. Down here we've got the um, Brad's Atomic Grape. You can see that these lower ones here, maybe you can't because it's so sunny, they're, they're beginning to colour up to a sort of golden colour. And, oh, I think in the bed, one of the beds up there, one tomato is beginning to colour. But this is just so late this year. Never had tomatoes not on our table from our plot at this time of year. Hey ho. But actually what I am noticing, if we come over here, it's the Amish paste. I'm noticing that things are beginning to grow, really sort of take on decent growth. I mean, this now is about three and a half foot. It's usually higher than that at this time of year, but I have noticed in the last week to 10 days, growth on the tomatoes has got better. We were also talking yesterday about how some leaves just flop in the sun and this bed was really quite floppy. All the leaves were down yesterday. It hasn't had any water since and you can see that the leaves are quite perky, but it will be getting water now. Yay. So yeah, that's going to be my regime for this morning, my regime, my Monday regime continues. I have started closing the polytunnel door at night, just leaving it ajar. I mean, even though we're getting hot days at the moment, or hot for us, sort of 25, 26, 27, up to 30, maybe even beyond this week, the nights are pretty cool. So, yeah. Yeah. Right, I'm going to get into this bed and do some weeding. I have weeded the beds. I'm going to pick up the green tomatoes and I am going to take the additional branch arms off the black crim in the middle. Because I need to put a frame in to hold the weight of the side shoot. So yeah, I'm not going to do that. Um, this is actually verbascum. I was wrong. The shape of the leaf rather confused me. But my app picture of this says it's a verbascum or mullein. And let me just squeeze the tripod together. I also wanted to show you this. I'm not sure if you can see it. Um, that's Creeping Jenny. So that's a type of bindweed. Very pretty flower but that will be coming out. I just wanted to show you what it looked like. 
I'm also noticing, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see, down here, we took cuttings last week, but down here, can you see here are some seedlings coming up. I assume those are going to be from this plant, the cross between the Portuguese cabbage and Nero de Toscana. So I might prick those out. We sowed some Portuguese cabbage yesterday and we have seeds of this cross, but I think these might be seedlings of the cross anyway. So I think I'll prick those out. Maybe not today. No, because it's already getting warm. And in fact, I did... Oh, let's just come over here. Get away from my shadow. I did these two beds. I was quite pleased with that. But the mood took me, so I also weeded this bed. And if we come up here... I weeded this bed and I weeded this bed and then I weeded this bed too. So I'm quite pleased with my work this morning. I actually thought, you know what Paul, just do one bed per day this week of weeding. It took me about an hour to do all the beds, but I'm really pleased I've got that done. That sort of wonderful sense of achievement that you get. Yeah, so I'm pleased about that. Well, the heat does feel as though it's beginning to pick up now. I've been down here about an hour, uh, just over an hour maybe. I walked down here with Richard and um, there's been a, a sort of... Monday is our sort of bin and recycling day so there's a lot of sort of recycling carts and you know refuse lorries going around and about on a Monday and of course they're quite noisy <laughs> and I forget that they they come and do this bit sort of quite early in the morning and then at Richards I think they must have been testing a fire alarm because that's gone off twice um, but you know what I was quite happy just doing that weeding and I know people don't like weeding but I do think it's an essential part of what we do here even if you're no dig you know yes one can hoe and uh, if you leave the space that someone like Charles Dowding says between plants then there is room to hoe but I find because we don't have a huge growing space here we have a lot larger than many but because it's not huge I tend to plant things and sow things and let them grow a little bit closer and hoeing isn't so much isn't so easy in those instances and with things like tomatoes there those roots do go down and they spread out but there's also roots right on the surface and I I worry about hoeing and damaging those roots because it might you know affect the production of the the plant but yeah, I'm happy to hand weed. You know, I find it quite therapeutic. You know, as I said, I thought, right, I'm going to do those two beds and then I'll do another bed a day throughout the week. And actually, once I got down there and I started weeding and thought, oh, I'll just do that bed. And then, oh, I'll do that bed. And oh, I'll do that bed. And oh, I'll do that bed. And suddenly there's one, two, three, four, five, six beds hand weeded in a matter of an hour. You know, so, yeah, I'm pleased with the work that I've done this morning. And now I am going to water and feed my Monday regime. Uh, so I'm going to go and do that. And I will pick up with you on doing something else in a day or so's time. See you very soon. Bye.
good day. First thing I did was top up the wildlife ponds because they just needed that little bit of extra water. That water's been sitting in a can, watering can for three days. So a lot of the chemicals will have um, gone from the water. And I'm gonna carry on. Oh, I've taken down that marjoram just there. And now I'm gonna take the netting off here and do the weeding underneath, take away dead leaves, and then I'll show it to you afterwards. Geraldine was actually asking about this netting, whether it was a fleece, and no, this is just a netting like Enviromesh to keep butterflies and insects off mainly. Um, it obviously keeps pigeons off as well because they can't peck through it, but it's to keep the sort of cabbage white butterflies and aphids off so that the aphids don't munch away and the cabbage white butterflies don't lay their eggs, which become caterpillars, which munch away on your brassicas and um, can do quite a lot of damage. So yes, I'm gonna take this netting off now, this mesh off now, um, and get weeding. These two beds of brassicas are now weeded. I've done a good job, not a perfect job, but I've done a really good job. And it's taken me about half an hour to do that. I've obviously moved the netting over from here over to there so that I could get in this bit. There's obviously room here to plant other things, so I'll have to think about that. Uh, we may, of course, have some other brassicas soon anyway but they're going to be going mainly into this bed, sorry, right over here. But yeah, I'm glad to have got that job done. It's, it was also a bit difficult because as this is one of the most undisturbed beds, because the netting is on it, it's a bed which red ants and ants really love because it's undisturbed soil so they can go in there and make their own homes. So of course, what I've been doing is disturbing their homes. And the ants, yeah, fine, but the red ants, they love their bitey biteys with their formic acid. So I have been careful to try and avoid, in fact, I haven't been bitten, but I've most probably encountered a thousand or so red ants in my work today. Is that a leaf over there? Oh yeah. Just a bit, a few bits of yellow leaf I hadn't taken off. Because there was some bindweed in there and also some sankfoil. All the weeds that I have taken out have gone into our brown Dalek perennial weed bin to rot down over 18 months, two years, something like that. Of course, we won't be using that, but it'll be good compost for other people. Right, now to get the netting back on before the cabbage whites descend. Though we are definitely seeing fewer this year. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Which is both a good thing and a bad thing, of course. Netting back on, and these have all had a really good water as well. There's plenty of headroom in that netting to allow the brassicas to grow. So you can see it's quite loose, so they have space to, to grow. I think when they get to about two and a half, three foot maybe, 
I'll need to move the netting that's on here to sort of half of the bed and then another piece of netting over here. I might actually use scaff netting then because most of the issues with cabbage whites and aphids will have gone by then. Well, depending how mild the autumn is and how mild the winter is, really. But yeah, these are doing well. I stupidly didn't show you the Brussels sprouts forming on the stems. I know Vivi always likes to have a look at how our Brussels sprouts are growing. Um, but I'll have to do that when I weed this bed again. Or maybe um, if I have time, I'll take the netting off one day and show you. But yeah that's the job done for today now back to my desk for a day's work i think it's just gone nine o'clock now so time to pour myself a cup of go, go back home pour myself a cup of tea and get to my desk see you very soon bye Frog. Sorry, Mr. Frog. Good day. It's Thursday morning, rather warm, 36.1 degrees in the shed here. 10 past nine, we've got a heat wave due in the um, UK. I think, is it just in the southern parts of the UK? I'm not sure. Over the next four or five days. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of watering. But what I have done this morning is two things. I have taken our first tomato harvest of the year. Yay. And I have also tidied up those black crim by taking off the side branches that I said I was going to do. And the harvest of tomatoes that we've got here, they, let me put that back, they are all going to go into a green tomato, potato and pea curry. I've harvested potatoes as well. And it's one of our favourite things to do with green tomatoes. Don't like green tomato chutney. Anything chutney wise acidic for me is not good because of my Barrett's esophagus. But the this curry is fabulous and it freezes well as well. So if you do end up at the end of the year with a glut of green tomatoes, don't just think about um, chutney because this curry is fabulous. I'll put a link in here on the YouTube on the youtube upload on the youtube i sound a bit like my mum there have you been doing things on the youtube lately that's what mum says <laughs> um lots of planes as you can hear um over the last few days coming out from heathrow i mean i i know that british airways said it was scrapping short haul flights from heathrow over the summer months but boy yeah those planes are just kicking out every five or six minutes at the moment Anyway, um, more harvesting, another courgette, no, another cucumber. These are one of Vivi's cucumbers. As I say, we're picking one a day at the moment. And um, 
have I harvested anything else? Oh yes, lettuce. I harvested the lettuce in the polytunnel. And as I was doing that, I, I know there's one or two frogs in the polytunnel. And as I was doing the harvesting, one of the frogs jumped out from under one of the lettuce leaves and um, jumped over to a, another area. I think I may have got a bit of footage of him, her. So if I did, I'll put it in here. Um, and then also I was going to the water butt and in the bright, this bright, bright sunshine we've got, there was two frogs in the middle of the path, just sitting in the bright sunshine. They did soon hop off into, um, into undergrowth on another plot, but you know, it's, um, it's just fabulous to, to see so much wildlife on our plot and wildlife that is doing our plot an awful lot of good as well. So yeah, that's um, that's about it for. T oh no, I did want to mention something else. Where yeah. ten tomatoes that changed the world? Thank you, Faith, for sending this as a belated birthday present. I'm absolutely chuffed to have received it. You may remember I have been listening to this as an audio book and I tossed up, shall I get the audio, shall I get the um, the hardback? It's a new book. It only came out, I think, in July. And I got the audio. And as soon as I started listening to the audio, I knew I wanted the actual book because there was so there's so much information there. It's what I call a, a sort of flick back, flick forward book. You know, you're reading something and you go, oh, yeah, that relates to that. Let me just double check. I understood that. And you flick back to to another page. You find it, you read it again and it just links it all up. It's a it's a really good book. I know some of you have read um, William Alexander's other book, The Sixty Four Dollar Tomato. And um, I'm looking for it. I'm also going to our central library here um, next week on Tuesday because as I think some of you know, we're 100 years old this year in September, October, November at this allotment. And we're looking at sort of old maps to sort of understand what, um, you know, what's what and what used to be here. We know it was pasture, but it's really interesting. We've looked at an 1894 map where, of course, this isn't here. But next door where Richard now works, that was um, is actually on the map it says nursery and we think that was the nursery for the asylum which is where Ealing Hospital is now so um yeah fascinating anyway yes 10 tomatoes that changed the world really looking forward to reading it I don't think I'm going to read it till October when the nights really start drawing in I'm going to put it aside to read then but it's one of those books that I'm going to go through with a pencil and a pad and I'm going to be making notes in the book and I'm going to be making notes in a pad which I'll then put onto my computer as well um fascinating really really loved it as a read oh and that reminds me about something yes I'll finish it there I'll finish it there but yes, thank you very much, Faith. Really, 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 really happy. Thank you very much. And thank you, um, everyone on Planet Vegetaria for, for watching these regularly and, and for those on the YouTube um, who watch us as well. Right, I'm going to carry on. I need to do some watering. I might even take our red umbrella along with me because it is very bright out there. Bye. Good day. Just checking out these Golden Gate beans, French beans. These are already bone dry. But I can feel that the seed inside isn't mature. There's maybe one there. Even that is nothing. And on this pod here, no, there's nothing, nothing down that whole length. And then a immature bean right at the end. can see that one maybe 
there's two beans in there which I'm going to pick and have demi sec but I don't even think those are mature wow gosh look at this one over here let me move you might as well take those leaves off I mean this bean here it's just nothing in it whatsoever one below yeah I don't think we'll be saving many beans to eat from these these are armadillo maroon as you can see the leaves are yellowing <laughs> yellowing and falling off um, even these are really beginning to go over that's fine for picking demi sec they sort of go this paler color you can see here paler color much paler color those are fine for demi sec and then freezing but you can see where this one hasn't developed at all got another one just down here that hasn't developed and when they're fresh to to eat as a bean they're sort of more like that color that's that's fine to eat as a pod but most of ours we um keep for eating in the winter and yeah i mean it's middle of august and i'm picking now to freeze i mean that's extraordinarily extraordinarily that's extraordinary yeah a short bean season our runners let's just move over a bit in more shade here but you can see our runners are producing again we're keeping them for the seed inside and these are generally doing better than the other two beans but not a huge amount i mean you can see can you see there tiny one that didn't uh come to anything but yeah we're um it's an odd it's an odd bean year it's an odd bean year got to take that off 38.8 in the shed already i sort of wonder how many odd years we need to have in a five-year period or a 10-year period for those odd years to actually become the norm and you know should we now be thinking having had several odd years i think we're saying odd years for the last three or four years is it now time to really start looking at what we're growing here and decide to grow different varieties of a particular veg or potentially even different vegetables you know um those Madeira Maroon, because of their name, Madeira, they seem to be doing better than the, the Golden Gate. I'm not sure where the Golden Gate is from. I'm going to have to look that up. But they were they were maroon beans that were found in Madeira. That's why they're called Madeira Maroon. And they do seem to be doing better, though, as I say, the Scarlet Emperor runner beans are doing fine as well. I mean, they are they Mexican or, or Aztec? I can't quite remember at the moment. That's, I think, where they originally come from. They're not UK, but they've grown really well in the UK and have become acclimatised over very many years. But yeah, I wonder how many odd years we need to have before odd becomes normal, before odd becomes the usual, if you see what I mean. And um, I mean, you know, the important thing about beans is for vegetarians like us, they're an important protein for the winter months. So, as I've said before, we don't usually we don't have many as an actual bean in the summer. Most are kept for drying or freezing demi sec and then we have them as a protein source over the winter months. But for the protein to be in the beans, the beans have got to get to maturity because there isn't the protein in them if they do not. And you can sort of feel sometimes when a, a bean which isn't quite mature is, is it sort of always feels a bit soft. I don't mean even sort of when it's, I mean even when it's dried, it sort of feels a bit soft. And that is a, a bean that hasn't fully formed and is not good to give the right amount of protein that we need. So it's really important that 
like with those golden gate you know if we're going to eat those beans the the seeds inside the bean pods they need to reach a state of maturity to have the protein in them to give us the protein that we need when we eat them i'm not so worried about the madeira maroon because i can feel that those beans where they have swelled up they have swelled up well and will will be a good protein source and I'm not worrying about the Scarlet Emperors because they are clearly bulking up inside there as well. And of course, it will be interesting when we get to the Scarlet Emperors, Shaz's black Scarlet Emperor runner beans, to see whether the beans inside are black or whether they have reverted to the standard Scarlet Emperor colour um, of the seed inside. So, yeah. Um, I've had a quick look at the... Portuguese cabbage that we sowed earlier in the week really good germination I think most of the cells how many did we sell we, the, there are 30 cells and 26 cells have got two seeds having germinated um, there's just four cells where there's one that has germinated I'm going to be pricking those uh, where there's two I'm going to be pricking the weakest out though at the moment they look pretty strong our Portuguese cabbage seed just does deliver. It really does. You know, really good germination. And actually, maybe I only put one seed into some of those cells as well. <laughs> you know, where there is only one. Maybe I, I got distracted. Anyway, look, Sunday is going to be the day that hopefully the heat wave in the UK breaks. We're sitting, I think, outside in the sun. It's sitting around sort of 35 at the moment, something like that. As I say, well, it's 39.3 now in the shed. So that's in a short space of time. It was about 38.3 when I came in. So tomorrow is going to be just a, another day of today. I'm not going to do a lot of tidying because it's just too hot. I'll leave that till next week. We're, we look as though we're going to go down to 25, 28 degrees on Monday. So, yes, this heat wave does break tomorrow, Sunday, and then hopefully rain on Tuesday and Wednesday. But let's hope it's the right type of rain. Let's hope it's not torrential. Let's hope it's good and constant and not torrential, because if it's good and constant, it will soak into the or begin to soften the, the top layer so that more moisture can actually get in below. If we have torrential rain, it'll just run down this whole site. And of course it could create flooding in certain areas of the UK. Anyway, let's not think about that. Let's not think about that. I'm going to say goodbye for this week's A Week at the Plot. And um, I hope whatever you're doing, you're enjoying the weather and it's not too much for you, wherever you are in the world. Of course, that might be too cold for some people at the moment as well. So I hope it's it's not. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to waffle. I'm going to go. See you again next week on YouTube for another upload of the whole week of A Week at the Plot. And see you on Planet Vegetaria if you watch this through in segments as we go through the week. See you soon. Bye.